This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. For all of you people who are plagued by wrongdoing, it is time at last to introduce you to the Grimsley Repent in Advance plan. Now hear me out. See, most people will do something bad, something wrong, then they repent of it, and then they suffer all of the turmoil and the suffering and the pain that follows. But by this new system which I've devised, it consists of repenting before you do something wrong, then not doing it, thereby eliminating and foregoing all of the misery, the guilt, and spiritual suffering entailed in doing something wrong. It's a true time saver. Next time you're tempted, use the repent in advance plan system and enjoy lasting results, everlasting. Now, some people teach and some people believe that God rewards good behavior with material blessings and that God punishes evil behavior with material curses or losses. But Jesus taught nothing of the sort. He once said, God sends his rain on the just and on the unjust alike and his sunshine on the good and the evil in Jesus' day. Rain and sunshine literally meant wealth. That was an agricultural economy. But God's sunshine and showers in truth are universal. They fall on everyone as God's love likewise is universal. It is for all of humankind. God's forgiveness, God's newness of life is available to anyone who will seek it. Seek and you will find. A cynic might complain... There's one good thing about going out in the world to make an honest living. You won't have much competition. But even in spite of all the crime, the dishonesty, graft, and corruption of the world, the teachings of Jesus yet still stand as the transcendent challenge of the ages. Blessed are you when you hunger and thirst after righteousness, after goodness, said Jesus, for you will be filled. Seek above all other things in your life to do the will of God. Pray, it is my will that yours be done. Jesus said, when a strong man, heavily armed, guards his own house, his property is in peace. But when a stronger man comes and conquers him, he removes all of the arms on which that man pinned his faith and divides the spoil among his friends. Anyone, said Jesus, who is not with me is against me. And the man who does not gather with me is scattering. There lies the fundamental choice of life. You have to take a stand. Are you with God's purposes on this earth or are you not? Do you gather or scatter? Is your loyalty to the divine? If you will give your life with all your heart to God, everything will become as new for you. Now understand, I'm not on the radio to win arguments. I'm on the radio to win people, to win people to the simple love and worship of God, to the love of God and humanity, to a belief, a conviction in the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man, that this planet is one family, and learning to live not in cringing, caviling doubt, but in vibrant faith. I was reading in the published correspondence of one prominent wealthy woman, came across this characteristically human sentence. I always push unpleasant things out of my head on the theory that if I don't think about them, they won't happen, end of quote. And that's how some people imagine religion, as a theological system designed for the avoidance of stern reality, somehow getting away from the hard facts of life, and so some religion is, but not the religion of Jesus who faced angry mobs with stones in their hands, hostile hecklers, poverty and rejection, and ultimately execution for what he believed and what he taught. This is no escapist faith. This is a religion which confronts reality. Boldly, fearlessly, it achieves spiritual victory by unremitting faith. And it is a wonderful way to live, a joyous way, a victorious way. Victorious, you may ask? Yes. Suppose your life seems to be composed entirely of difficulties, problems, and issues. How do you solve a difficulty? 
specifically. Number one, recognize that there is a problem in your life, whatever it may be. But recognize it. Refuse to hide from it or pretend that it simply isn't there. Number two, analyze it. Put it underneath your mental microscope. Give it close scrutiny. Understand it. Break it down into its constituent parts. Third, gather all the facts which possibly pertain to this problem. List alternative solutions. Multiply alternatives. Fourth, pray about it. Ask God's guidance in dealing with a problem. Decide then on the best solution. And fifth, and this is the great challenge, begin to apply the solution decided upon in your life. Actually act upon it. And then, having done all the best that you could, having given it your best efforts, then be not anxious and learn the lessons of contentment to be content with what you possess. There was an old story about a poor man who said to a rich man, I am richer than you are. And the rich man asked, how can that be? The poor man replied, it can be this way, because he said, I, I have as much money as I want, and you haven't. What shall it profit a man, asked Jesus, if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul. The great issues of life are not material, they are spiritual. Said the philosopher Aristotle, if a man is interested in himself only, he is very small. If he is interested in his family, he is larger. If he is interested in his community, he is larger still. How large, I would ask, is the person who is interested in God? If you become interested in God... You are interested in the greatest subject in the universe. And the greatest subject in the universe happens to be interested in you because God loves you. God knows who you are, where you are, what your problems are. God is your father. And you are a son or daughter of God. That transforms everything. The Russian author Leo Tolstoy said to a young reformer, you're sweating too much blood for the world, he said. Sweat some blood for yourself first. If you want to make the world better, you have to be the best that you can be. You cannot bring the kingdom of God into the world until you bring it into your own heart first. Seek first the kingdom of God, said Jesus, and his righteousness, and all other things of importance will be added to you. But let first on your priority list be the place for God, for God's will, God's wisdom, God's plans for this planet, God's purposes for your life on this earth. Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify your Father, God, in heaven. The philosopher Aristotle wrote of the ideal man, this is part of his definition, the ideal man takes joy in doing favors for others. You read in the scriptures, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Samuel Johnson years ago said, gratitude is a fruit of great cultivation. You do not find it among gross people. Giving and serving are antidotes to unhappiness. But whenever you're depressed, when you're forlorn, if you ever feel you have nothing to be thankful for nothing but trouble. Smile. Throw back your shoulders. Take a deep breath. Sing and pray. Praise God. Laugh. Look upon the lighter side of human existence because the scriptures teach, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And you can control. You have dominion over what you think in your heart and your soul and your mind. Let these be joyous and affirmative thoughts. You can't think fear and act courageously. You can't think courage and then act fearfully. You cannot think hatred and then act kindly. Not really. You might as oppose, but you can't genuinely. Conversely, you can't think kindly and act hatefully. Your feelings inevitably correspond to your dominant thoughts and your actions. Again, it is written... Whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, 
Whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Because you have control over what you think. There's an old folk rhyme. I had the blues because I had no shoes until upon the street I met a man who had no feet. Count your blessings. I mean that literally. If need be, take a piece of paper and sit down and write them out in longhand. But praise God for what you have, for the love of your friends, for your good health, or for whatever you can list. And worship God. And love God. Because life is fundamentally good in spite of its problems and vicissitudes. Psychologists have found there are three reasons why people criticize other people. First, in order to elevate themselves that they might appear to be superior. Second, in order to project miserableness upon other people. And thirdly, people will criticize the very things of which they themselves are guilty or the things which tempt them most and which trouble them the most. This is called the psychological theory of projection. But you can't hold a person down without staying down with that person. Jesus taught humility. One of the saddest and most foolish superstitions in the world is that people can arrive at righteousness without willpower, that people can build good characters without effort, because if you're going to change, it'll be by resolving to change. You can either despair over yourself or undergo change within yourself by the power and by the purposes of God, because God has a will for your life. And a big person is not a person who makes no mistakes, but a person who is bigger than any mistakes which he makes. Some men and women make difficulties, but difficulties make some men and women. Life is a brim with challenges. Rise to meet them in faith. I remember one day I was reading a newspaper and I saw this headline. It said, Man Wanted for Robbery in San Francisco. And I couldn't help thinking how much it sounded like an advertisement in the Help Wanted column. Man Wanted for Robbery in San Francisco. But there is one advertisement which I would like to write and have it printed in every newspaper in the land, every newspaper on earth. Wanted, urgently, men and women, young and old, willing to be loyal to supreme values, to serve God with all their hearts. Mission, transform the world. Method, by becoming transformed yourself. Requirements, sincerity and wholehearted faith. Fringe benefits, peace, power, purpose, and joy. Apply to the living God. And if you find yourself at all interested... I've just told you where to apply. And then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer. All this literature, yours with no cost, charge, or obligation. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.